Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today, I have for you the petroleum boiler in the counterflow style. This design was of course made famous by the oxygen not included god himself, Francis John. His video is linked in the description down below and all credit goes to him. I figured I would make my own video about it and explain it in my unique style. But let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are. So let's pause the game, let's turn our overlay back on and let's take a look into our F2 overlay first. Okay, so first of all, we need to power those two mechanized airlock doors that are right here. We have our Robo Miner that needs to be powered, as well as those two mechanized airlocks and another liquid pump. That is the standard setup. I even added one more down here on the bottom inside of infinite storage, just so we can store our petroleum somewhere. That is everything that I have and the potential load is 1080 watts. And that is it. Next on the list to take a look at is our F6 overlay for our plumbing. Uh, of course, we are just coming out of here somewhere so we can do potentially something with our petroleum. Obviously, in here, I don't have a use for it, but that is up to you. With our pump right here, we're just going to come out and we're going to put it wherever we want to. In my case, once again, the infinite storage. Now, here comes the important part. We have our def liquid pump right here, which is for me, my source of crude oil, where your crude oil in your games come from. Once again, that is up to you. You should have a steady source of crude oil if you build something like that. Then I have here a liquid valve that is made out of steel. That really doesn't matter that much. I just happened to made it out of steel. So we can actually control the flow, especially when we start it up. We want to probably dial it down quite a lot during startup because of several issues that we will get into in a little bit. But then we just come into here and we try to take up as much space with our radiant liquid pipes as we can. The radiant liquid pipes are made out of gold and not out of aluminum. That is also pretty important to keep the heat exchange stable. Then how are we going to go? We're just going to come around here all the way through, snake it one time through, two times through, and a third time, just so we can then come up to a liquid vent and drop it into this chamber right here. This is what our piping looks like. And that is already it. The only other thing that we have is automation, but we will get into that in a little bit. First of all, let's take a look into how this thing here is actually built. Here on the top, we have a volcano. All you need to make sure is that before you actually start it up, you will have to accumulate quite a little bit of magma. And once you have it, you should be golden. All these insulated tiles that are around here that are touching the magma have to be made out of obsidian. There is barely any heat transfer, but when there is heat transfer, you need to make sure that it does not melt. And the only material that does not melt, that is not insulation or anything like that, is obsidian. Let's take a look at that. If I take one of these tiles here and copy it, the melting point for obsidian is 2729.9 degrees, where for example, our standard building material igneous rock is at 1412. And when we take a look here, our magma is at 1726 degrees. So obviously those two numbers don't mix very well. The next thing that is important, let's zoom in a little bit for that right here. This area right here has to be nine tiles long. The door has to be at the 10th. Magma only flows 10 tiles. It does not flow into an 11th. There's only magma in here because we fill this here up and then give it extra force to come over here. That is the only reason we have it right here. Other than that, it would never ever reach it. Then we have this mechanized airlock right here with two spaces in between, that is important, and then another mechanized airlock right there. All this here is controlled by automation and we will get into that in a second. Next of all, and that is also important, is this Robo Miner right here. Without it, it won't work. And you will have to build something like this here. These are metal tiles that will dissipate the heat. Everything in here is built in a vacuum. You can see there is nothing in here. Everything is vacuum and that is highly important. The only problem with that is, of course, if our Robo Miner is in here, it will eventually overheat no matter what you make it out of. It is just a question of time. To prevent that from happening, we have a tiny little drop of crude oil right here. It's only 10 grams that's all it takes and then we have those metal tiles here that dissipate the heat out into our liquid lock this liquid lock here is not just there to look nice or to dissipate the heat but that is also the way for the dupes to get in and actually build this here you will probably need another entry over here somewhere on the top so you can actually build all of this here to come in from the top with your dupes but i have not built this because it's not really necessary for what we are doing right now you just need to make sure that you get in here somehow and that is preferably from the top down with a ladder that you will need an ample amount of atmos suits is probably something that I don't have to mention, I hope. Then down here, let's get into the nitty gritty. Our magma will eventually fall down due to our automation. And again, I will explain that in a second. And when the magma falls down right here, it will just sit here and it will slowly but steadily dissipate the heat through those two window tiles here. Those window tiles are made out of diamond. Then we have right here a temp shift plate that is also made out of diamond. 
And we have here a mechanized airlock made out of steel. Then those two metal tiles here. They should be made out of gold because steel and aluminum will kind of transfer the heat a little bit faster than it should. So gold is the optimal material. And then we have three more temp shift plates made out of diamond once again. That is basically how we are transferring the heat. The heat is coming from our magma into our window tile, into our temp shift plate, into our mechanized airlock, and then into our metal tiles. Of course, the mechanized airlock will only transfer heat if it is closed. So right at this moment where we have paused the game, there is no heat transfer happening at all. And that is exactly what that should look like. This is how we control the temperature of our petroleum in here. Then the general idea is we are dropping all this crude oil in here. It falls down. It becomes petroleum. Basically, right away, it will fill up this chamber and eventually overflow. Blow to the right, blow back to the left, back to the right, back to the left until it ends up in this chamber right here. And then this pump here will pick it up and bring it down to here. So let's take a look at the automation overlay. That is the interesting part of this video, in my opinion, at least. We have all this stuff here on the left, and it looks a hell of a lot more complicated than it actually is. Let's start with the easy stuff. Right here, we have on the second tile up, not on the very bottom, but one above it, a hydro sensor. And the hydro sensor is set to above 500 kilograms. So the bottom here is always completely full with petroleum, and the top layer here, if it goes above 500 kilograms, our pump will turn on and bring it over into our infinite storage. Then the thermal sensor right here, also so very simple is set to above 406 degrees so if this area right here is at above 406 degrees this door here will be open and that is what's happening right now we can see the current ambient temperature is 406 and send the green signal if above 406 which is exactly what it is right now the door is open no heat transfer is happening why 406 let's take a look into our overlay right here and our crude oil boils into petroleum at 399.9 degrees Celsius. An extra six degrees on top of it gives us 406 just as a little bit of a safety margin. This here is basically just a little bit of a delta so we can offset this door here going crazy on us the entire time. Back to our automation overlay. Okay so what do we have here? This here is a memory toggle and this here is a filter gate. So what exactly is happening here? Let's see. We have our thermal sensor down here, which is right above the door and inside the magma. And we have it set to below 435 degrees Celsius. So if the magma that's in here falls below 435 degrees Celsius, we will send a green signal. The green signal will go into our memory toggle right here, but it will also go all the way to the top. And on the top here, we have hooked up our robo miner as well as this filter gate. This filter gate I have set to 25 seconds, you can set it to 20, you can set it to higher. It doesn't really matter that much as long as you don't go completely crazy and this here will all cool down. How this actually looks like we will see in a second, but now we are talking theory. So the green signal comes up, our robo miner turns on. At this point this magma here is not magma anymore, it's igneous rock and it has frozen. So it is actually a solid tile that our miner has to mine out. At the same time this is happening, also this signal here is given in green and it will open this door right here. As soon as our miner has mined out those two tiles in this area, it will just fall into here. What you want to do with your igneous rock, that's up to you. The only problem with it is it is relatively hot at 344.5 degrees, so you will have to find some sort of way to cool it down, but it is a really, really good source of igneous rock. So our thermal sensor here sends a green signal, our robo miner is on, it mines all the stuff here out, it falls through, and after 25 seconds, whatever we have this here set to, this signal here will turn green, which means this door here will open and here we have a not gate which means this door here will close so these doors here will always be in the exact opposite state of each other if the bottom one is closed the top one is open and vice versa when this here opens the magma that is in this area here falls down and falls back into this area giving back out a red signal because we are way above 435 degrees at the same time we are giving a signal all the way down to here which is the reset port which then gives out a red signal and closes this door. That is basically the theory of how this whole system here works. It may sound complicated, but it really isn't, and you will see here in a second how that works. Let's get out of this view, and let's actually turn it on and run it for a second right here. So this here is what we are looking like. We can see we're running down with our petroleum left and right and left and right all the way to here. We're just putting in a constant 10 kilograms of crude oil per second. And this is also the output. The output obviously equals the input. 10 kilograms in means 10 kilograms out. It is a 100% efficient system. You have no loss whatsoever. What is this mechanized airlock over here? 
Well, this here's our maintenance excess. Since all this here is in vacuum and there is really nothing there when we turn it on. So this is entire vacuum. There is no heat transfer to the store. But when you start this system here up, you may have to go in here every once in a while. Because, for example, these two tiles here are very prone to breaking due to the heat difference. And down here on the bottom, we also have these metal tiles and even potentially these insulated tiles here take a little bit of damage due to overpressure. That only happens during the very first initial startup. That's what the store here is for, so your dupes can go in. Theoretically, once you have it running, you won't need it anymore and you can get rid of it. Here on the bottom left, we can see the magma has now solidified and it's igneous rock that still holds a ton of energy. So even though it's not a glowing red hot magma anymore, it is still working like a charm. Exactly as it's supposed to be. Our door here opens and closes whenever needed, depending on what the thermal sensor here tells it. And it keeps our petroleum nice and hot. This system here is so efficient because we are running radiant liquid pipes through here. So when we take a look at that real quick, we are coming in at 76.8 degrees. That is just what the def liquid pump puts out. Whatever you are coming in doesn't really matter that much. And we are coming through here. By the time we are reaching the top, it is already at 360 degrees. So it really only needs to heat up another 40 degrees before it flashes over into petroleum. Also, our petroleum here on the very top, it is at about 410 degrees. And by the time we are all the way down here, we are at 190 degrees. So we are basically taking over 200 degrees Celsius out of it in heat just by running it past these radiant liquid pipes right here, which makes it so, so efficient. So let's wait a little bit until these two tiles of igneous rock right here have uh, cooled down to below 435 degrees Celsius. And then we will see our Robo Miner and our entire automation here on the left in action. And here we have it. Any second now, our igneous rock on the very bottom here is below 435 degrees and we should be able to see what's happening. Okay, let's see. We are below it. The door opens and the Robo Miner turns on. I'm going to pause the game right here and we're going to take a look into our automation overlay. So we can see that the memory toggle here has turned green. It's sending a signal to the mechanized airlock as well as to the filter gate and the Robo Miner. The Robo Miner immediately turns on and starts mining out our igneous rock tiles right here. So let's let that happen here for a second. So the first tile here is going to be gone any time now. There it is. And the second tile will be gone here very soon as well. And there we have it, it falls down and then for a few seconds here nothing happens. This here just stays the way it is. That is a good moment to pause it and go back into the automation overlay. So we are about to see that this door here opens and this door here closes right now. And at that point we can go back and we see the magma falling down, filling it back up. This door opens again, fills up our chamber one more time. This door here closes and we are back to status quo. At this point, all the heat is being transferred once again into the system right here. We can see we have a tiny little bit of crude oil right here, but that will flash over in a heartbeat as soon as the heat comes back in. Just like that. It's literally this simple. And there's probably only one question. What happens if you run out of oil? Let's see. Does the system here work if we just turn it off? So let's turn up the speed just a tiny little bit. There we go. No more oil is flowing. We are just pumping in the last that we still have in our line. And then the system here will just stop. It's that simple. And here's the last little bit. And it's in there. All that is left is, of course, that tiny little bit of overflow that needs to flow all the way down. And then it will just stop and it will just wait. A little bit of heat is still going into the insulated tile right here, but that is it. That is literally it. We are not doing anything else. The obsidian here may actually heat up all the way to the temperature of the magma eventually, but that is the worst case scenario. Other than that, the system will just sit here and wait for us to have more crude oil available. So let's wait until this here has completely stopped, there is no more flow, and then we're gonna turn it back on and see what happens. And here we have it, the system is completely turned off, it's just sitting here doing nothing, still heating up these insulated tiles here, that is the fault of this temp shift plate, but again, that is fine, that's why we made it out of obsidian. So let's turn it back on, let's just give it full force right away, and let's see what actually happens. We can see it's coming in. I'm going to turn up the speed and we will see if anything breaks or anything else like that. In case it would actually break, we still have our mechanized airlock right here, but nothing should happen at all. We're taking a bunch of heat out of our petroleum and right here it's falling back down and our thermal sensor here should turn on relatively quickly and transfer fresh heat in because we don't have a hell of a lot of heat left. There it is. And our system is now back up and running like nothing has ever happened. That is the nice thing about it. 
The only thing you would have to worry about, of course, is if your magma runs out. But that's why you have a big old reservoir right here. That should be more than enough. Even if this thing here goes dormant, it should not really matter. Um, it should still work. You just need to make sure that you build this here big enough. I will probably build it even bigger in a real game just to be safe. Probably build it a little bit further into this direction here just so you have more than enough magma in here and that should never ever become a problem. In case you do run out of magma, what is going to happen is, of course, you're pumping crude oil into here and you have no heat source. So your entire system here will be flooded with crude oil and will mess up your entire system. So that is something you should avoid. But other than that, this is the counterflow boiler as made famous once again by the number one oxygen not included guy, Francis John. Thank you very much for this design, Francis. You already made it, I believe, in 2019 or something crazy like that. It is insane and it still works to this day like a charm. But all I have left to say with that is thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. And with that, I say thank you and peace.